Hi, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful world of stoichiometry. What is stoichiometry, you ask? Well, it is the math involved with balancing equations. So if I put in a certain amount of product or a certain amount of reactant, I can determine how much product I should make. Or if I put in, if I want to make how mo a certain amount of product, I can determine how much reactant I need to use. If I know the amount of one reactant, I can determine the amount of the other reactant I need to make that happen. So, uh, stoichiometry is going to require balanced chemical equations in the first place. So the first thing we're going to start with is just doing some basic mole ratios. And you might say basic doesn't always happen in chemistry, but this is some things you've done in the past with dimensional analysis, and this won't be too bad at, at all. So this whole front page is going to be mole ratios. And what we always do is we're going to start with the given, just like we have in the past. 2.3 moles of Al2O3. And I'm going to set up one conversion factor. This whole front page will have one conversion factor on it. And I need to cancel. So we'll put moles of Al2O3 on the bottom. And what I want will always be on top. So I want moles of aluminum on top. Now, what, he, what this is called is a mole ratio. That's why this whole thing is called mole ratios. So on t on this mole ratio is going to come from a balanced equation. So for every four moles of aluminum, I make two moles of aluminum oxide. So whenever I have a mole ratio, every single time with stoichiometry, I have a mole ratio, and every, one that I, every time I use it, I need to look at my balanced equation. So balanced equation um, is, comes first in stoichiometry. So I have four moles of aluminum from here for every two moles of aluminum oxide from here. So if I do the math, the, these cancel out, I end up with moles of aluminum, and I get 4.6 moles of aluminum. Now remember, just multiplying across the top, dividing across the bottom, just like any other dimensional analysis we have done in the past. I'll do number two with you also. 0.84 moles of Al. Again, I want to cancel, so I'm going to put moles of aluminum down here. I always want to cancel my given with the bottom of the conversion factor. Now I'm looking for moles of oxygen. So there's just another, there's just another, con another mole ratio between all of these um, chemicals within this balanced equation. So the ratio from aluminum to oxygen, or oxygen to aluminum, is 3 to 4. So 3 over 4. The moles of aluminum will cancel each other out. My answer will be in moles of oxygen. I take 0.84 times 3 and divide it by 4, and we get 0.63 moles. At this point, the other ones on the front are all the same type of problem. So go ahead and try the other problems on the front. There are five remaining problems, and see if you can get the answers for those. So go ahead and solve for those next five problems, and we'll come back and we'll talk about the next type of stoichiometry problems. Hopefully the problems on the front went well for you. Now we're going to jump it up a notch and try different types of stoichiometry problems. So we need to have a balanced equation first. So we'll go ahead and balance. I have three carbons, and I want to put three carbons here. I have eight hydrogens. I need to put a four here to get eight hydrogens. And I have 6 plus 4 oxygens. That gives me a total of 10 oxygens, so I'll put a 5 here to balance the equation. So as you remember from the front, this means that I have 1 mole for every 5 moles of oxygen. We'll make 3 moles of carbon dioxide and 4 moles of hydrogen. There's mole ratios everywhere. 5 moles of oxygen to 3 moles of carbon dioxide. 4 moles of water to 1 mole of propane. So there's mole ratios we can use all over the place. Every stoichiometry problem will use a mole ratio, so you need to have a balanced equation first. So, how are these different? Well, it's not just a one-step process normally. If there's going from moles of one thing to moles of another, it'll be a one-step process. But that's not always the case. So again, we're going to start with a given. So in this case, our given is 25.0 grams of water. And again, we need to cancel our given. So the grams of water will go here. Anytime you have grams in a conversion factor, remember this is a conversion factor, 
It is something that we know. We can put seven days per one week. We can put uh, um, 12 eggs per one dozen. It's things that are related to each other, that are equivalent to each other. So we know how many grams. Anytime grams is a conversion factor, the other part of it is going to be one mole of something, the same thing. Because we can always determine a molar mass of something by looking at the periodic table. If I add up one oxygen and two hydrogens, I'm going to get 18.02. So that's 16.00 from the oxygen, 1.01 from each of the hydrogens for a total of 18.02. And if I wanted to be done at this point, I would be able to solve for moles of water. But I want more. I want moles of oxygen. So in this case, I'm going to take it another step. Now I go moles of water. And I know that I have a mole ratio. I have a relationship between moles of water and moles of anything on here. But in this case, I want moles of oxygen. So moles of oxygen I will make my relationship. And that's what I want, so now I'm done. So I look at my equation. I have five moles of oxygen for every four moles of water. Uh, my grams of water will cancel. My moles of water will cancel. And in the end, I'll get moles of oxygen. I need to go 25 times 5 divided by 18.02 divided by 4. And if you do that math with your calculator, you should get 1.73 moles of oxygen. And you're also going to start noticing a trend as far as how, we, how many conversion factors you need. And the faster you understand this trend, the more better things will go for stoichiometry. So if I'm going from moles of one substance to moles of another substance, I'm going to need one conversion factor. I'm just going to call it CF, one conversion factor. Like on the front, we only need one of these conversion factors. If I'm going from grams to moles, like we just did, or moles to grams, and with stoichiometry, these are always different materials or substances. And for either of those, I'm going to need two conversion factors. If I'm going from grams of one thing to grams of another thing, again, we're always, these are two different substances, I'm going to need three conversion factors. That is the most we'll use. So let's practice one of the, the next one. Number two on the back here is if three moles of propane react with oxygen, how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced? All right. So from what I just went over, I'm going from moles and I want grams. So 3.00 moles of propane is my given. Since I'm going from moles of one thing to grams of another, I'm going to need two conversion factors. I always got to cancel out my given. So this is moles of C3H8. Um, I can fill in things a little bit differently. And I just want to show you how I would think about this too. Grams of carbon dioxide are wanted. So that's going to definitely be on the top of my last conversion factor. Whatever I want will always be there. Whenever I have grams, the other part of it is one mole. The other part of the conversion factor. So that tells me here, since I'm going to cancel diagonally every time, that this has to be moles of carbon dioxide. This conversion factor comes from our balance equation, which I don't show here anymore. But you still have, this is a 1 and this is a 3. My number of grams in carbon dioxide would be 12.01 from this grams and 32.00 from the two oxygens for a total of 44.01 grams. If I multiply through, since I have just a bunch of ones on the bottom, those will cancel, those will cancel, those will cancel, I'll get grams of carbon dioxide. So all I have to do is multiply through, and I would get 396 grams in this case. All right. The last one we're going to do together is number three. And number three is the case that we haven't done yet, where we have grams given, grams of oxygen, and I'm looking for grams of something else. So remember from our little chart we put up on the top right before, when I go from grams to grams, I mean three conversion factors. And I'll just start filling in my units. This is the toughest part of stoichiometry. If I have grams of one thing, the other thing is one mole of oxygen. One mole of the same thing. Anytime grams is a conversion factor. 
right, I'm looking for grams of propane, so I can put that here. Because that is what I want. It's going to be the top last conversion factor. Anytime it's grams, the other part is one mole of that same thing, because we're going to end up with a molar mass on top here. This has to be moles of propane, because they're going to cancel. This has to be moles of oxygen, because they're going to cancel diagonally every, every single time. As I look at my balance equation, this is a 1, and this is a 5. If I look at two oxygens, it's 32.00. I look at three carbons, 3 times 12.01 equals 36.03. And I add that to 8, 8 hydrogens. 8 times 1.01 .01 is 8.08. .08. So for a total of 44.11, that is my total mass of the propane. So in my calculator, again, these units will cancel. My goal in the end is to get grams of propane. My calculator, I'm going to have 2.54 times 44.11 divided by 32 divided by 5. And my final answer in this case will be 0 0.700 grams of propane. Still using sig figs. You haven't noticed. Our given has three sig figs. This has four. These ones and fives, these whole numbers don't matter for sig figs. This has four. So my smallest amount of sig figs is three. So right here. So in addition to the front uh, four, five that you did, I also want you to try number four here and bring it with to class. Thank you.